All right. Um, I'm going to speak to you today a little bit about my journey from the bench to uh, being in publishing or how to succeed in business by really trying. Um, I work for the American Chemical Society. I've been with uh, ACS for about the past five and a half years. Um, you've all been here, I think, for a good part of today, so you've kind of drunk the Kool-Aid about ACS, so I won't um, go on too much about, uh, about the organization except to say that it's a fantastic place to work and I've got amazing colleagues that I uh, get to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, like Hassan's presentation, I'll sort of um, outline how I got to be where I am, what do I do on a daily basis, what did I need to get to be where I am, and uh, what does my job do for the world. Um, so, uh, my academic background is here. I have PhD, or a, a BS in biology with a minor in chemistry from MIT, and then I got a PhD in molecular and cell biology from Cal. Go Bears! Um, <laughs> and uh, right after my PhD, three weeks after I finished my PhD, I started at Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in Washington, D.C. Um, as a recruiting editor uh, where I was trying to, working to beef up their um, chemistry and physical sciences uh, portfolio. So instead of being known as just a biology journal, um, they could be known as a biology journal with a little bit of chemistry too. Um, the, the journey from Berkeley to Washington was reasonably traumatic. I think I pretty much like ditched my entire wardrobe along the way and replaced it with my Berkeley Birkenstocks with uh, you know suits and heels and stuff. Um, <laughs> So in 2005, I moved to ACS, uh, which is about eight blocks away, um, and started as the managing editor for ACS Chemical Biology, and shortly thereafter took on ACS Nano. Um, I'm very pleased to say that both of those publications are award-winning. We're named um, Outstanding uh, Best New Journal in, in um, Physical Sciences for ACS Nano, and uh, ACS Chemical Biology was awarded an Innovation and in Publishing Award. Um, I then uh, took a role as an acquisitions editor where I managed an entire portfolio of chemistry um, and then last summer took a job as director of editorial office operations. So that was my academic pedigree, but what's missing? So um, in graduate school and as an undergrad, I did a lot of things outside of the lab um, and maybe this should have been sort of a tip off to me that I wasn't sort of cut out for, for bench research. Um, I did a lot of work in student government, uh, both at MIT and at Cal, um, working with the departmental student groups, um, on, with the visiting committees um, who are evaluating the department, um, uh, cross-departmental things, all kinds of different things. Um, I spent some time doing lobbying or advocacy work on behalf of um, uh, research universities and on behalf of some scientific societies, uh, and that uh, piqued my interest, actually, in, in science policy. And then I also spent um, a lot of time from the time I was about this tall till uh, through college um, doing theater. And I think that uh, gave me quite a bit of um, ease in front of, uh, of an audience and, and that's been very important too. So how did I get here? Um, Somewhere midway through graduate school, I, uh, I was a cell biologist and I spent a lot of time pipetting small volumes of liquid from one tube to another at ridiculous hours in the middle of the night until my eyes were bleeding practically, right? Um, and I decided I couldn't do that anymore. I thought it was great to be the world's expert on this little corner of cell biology and this particular kinase and, and the uh, transcription factor that it interacted with, but it wasn't really what got me up in the morning or kept me up late at night. Um, so I had to sort of decide what it was that I really wanted to do. Um, and I consciously focused on expanding my network. And I can't tell you how much it is who you know that's really important in helping you get a job. Um, I worked on my professional network uh, through folks um, in my university at, at Berkeley, um, also keeping in contact with um, good people uh, at MIT and frankly like today um, I can't tell you how valuable places like LinkedIn and or Facebook are in terms of helping find new talent for jobs that I have open or for um, uh, keeping in touch with, with important people. Um, I had a lot of cool experiences like I said I did a little bit of lobbying on Capitol Hill um, and that was really useful. Um, all of my work in student government um, meant that I was, un I was comfortable being in front of a group of people and leading people. You know, I can remember my, uh, my undergraduate research advisor, as he was writing his recommendation letters for me for grad school, said, you know, Sarah, at some point you're going to have to figure out 
what it is that you want to concentrate on and actually concentrate on something. And I sort of blew him off and <laughs> said, yeah, okay, whatever, Harvey. Um, he was right, of course. Um, but what I really wanted to concentrate on wasn't science or wasn't research. And I think the most important thing about how I got to be where I, be, where I am is that I asked. So when I had made this decision that I didn't want to move small volumes of liquid um, from one tube to another, I sat down with a faculty member in my department. He's the guy I took freshman, or first year graduate school biochemistry with um, and said, hey, Nick, I know that you have a lot of contacts in Washington, DC. I think that I want to do science policy. Who can you put me in touch with? And he said, well, you know, X, Y, and Z, and here's their email addresses and phone numbers, and uh, feel free to tell them that I sent you. That's great. And then in the next breath, he said, um, and I've got this job open at my journal. Are you interested? So talk about falling into a career. Publishing wasn't sort of, you know, what I had, uh, what I had planned to do, um, but it works. It's, it's a fantastic fit for my personality and probably a much better fit than science policy would have been, knowing what I know now. Um, when I was looking for a new job uh, after a couple of years at PNAS, um, I, I sort of looked around a bunch of different career sites and knew that there was a job open at ACS to start this new journal called ACS Chemical Biology. So the editor-in-chief, Dr. Laura Kiesling at um, University of Wisconsin at Madison had been named editor-in-chief. And so at an ACS meeting in the fall of 2005 in Washington, DC, I heard a presentation by Laura that, where she was talking up the new journal. And after a presentation, um, I went up to her and I said, hey, my name is Sarah Tagan. Here's some experience that I've got. I'd like to work for you. Um, three weeks later, I was at ACS. So I think um, the thing that I'd like to recommend is just be fearless. Like, ask people for help. Um, I can't tell you how willing a lot of people are to help with your careers. So that said, I'm a publisher. Um, I mentioned before that I started off as a managing editor and then moved on to some other things. And I'll tell you a little bit about what it is that, uh, that each of these jobs does. So a managing editor in ACS parlance um, is really our entry level job for a PhD person. Um, a managing editor generally oversees the day to day of a journal. They're working closely with an editor in chief um, to ensure manuscript flow through the peer review process, whether that's you know, looking at, at articles that might be stuck, saying, hey, we need maybe some additional reviewers, here's who I might suggest, or hey, um, how do we attract more authors about a particular topic to the journal? Um, they may be people who work on securing special pieces of content. So both ACS ChemBio and ACS Nano um, are what we call a hybrid journal. They have perspectives and conversations and commentaries and all kinds of fun pieces that are um, not the peer-reviewed meat of our, uh, of our journals. And those are things that have to be pretty much individually managed um, and invited and with some editing and massage work and um, maybe some figure work and stuff like that. And a managing editor is generally the person who uh, works on those things. Um, a managing editor helps ensure that the scientific resources are in place for a journal. They work in collaboration with the editor-in-chief and other ACS staff members to say, is the composition of this editorial advisory board correct? Or I noticed that we're getting a lot more articles on graphene in the case of ACS Nano. Can we find an associate editor who might have the best expertise to, to help us um, in that regard? Um, they help uh, in the collaborative development of the journal. So with both, again, with the editor and the associate editors and editorial advisory board and ACS staff, set a course for the journal. What is the journal, what should the journal or could the journal look like in five years? How do we raise its impact factor? Are we satisfied with the number of citations? Do we want to increase or decrease the number of submissions to the journal? Those kinds of things. Um, and a managing editor uh, is, like I said, is usually someone who's fresh out of graduate school or a postdoc. Um, and is still close to the science. So they often interact with scientists out at scientific meetings. So I spent a lot of time at Gordon conferences, um, ACS meetings, going to scientific sessions, um, ski stones, you know, you name it. Um, you know, I think had suitcase will travel, pack flip flops first uh, was kind of my mantra. Um, so uh, I was promoted to an acquisitions editor. So an acquisitions editor. Um, oversees a portfolio of journals. So I managed about 15 of our journals um, in physical chemistry, material science, and nano. So it ranged from stuff like Journal of Physical Chemistry, which accounts for about 20% of all of our submitted articles. It's a huge journal, right? Um, 
and uh, down to brand new journals like ACS Nano and some of our specialized journals, um, Chemistry Materials, Dr. Kozlarich was here before. Um, so it, uh, I really got to work closely with a great group of editors-in-chief um, and their associate editors. Um, an acquisitions editor often manages staff. Uh, I had a staff of about three folks um, who reported to me, and those folks were um, managing editors. And then we had a, a research assistant, uh, effectively. Um, you work to plan initiatives. Uh, how do we get out a virtual special issue from three different journals on, uh, we have one that just came out that um, Jim Cyber talked about on sustainable fuels, biofuels. Um, how do I get the, the three different journals to collaborate and pick the best articles for stuff like that? Um, or things that are uh, more broad cutting across ACS, so um, an IT initiative to, you know, um, enhance the ACS publications website. What are types of information that people might want to see? Um, again, it's ensuring that the proper uh, scientific resources are in place for the journal, just like it was before. Um, managing budgets, um, so each journal has a budget, um, so a portfolio of journals probably accounts for, you know, somewhere in the uh, $25 million kind of range. Um, and it's really kind of oversight of, of a budget, not necessarily planning exactly where things get spent. There's a lot of stuff that you don't have a lot of control over. Um, and then at this point, instead of so much interacting with scientists, this is where you really begin to interact with publishers. So you'd spend a lot more time, instead of going to scientific meetings, going to publisher meetings and serving on committees within the industry and things like that. Um, and I can tell you at this point that for me it's a real treat to be able to go to a scientific session and hear some science. It's not something that I really get to do a lot of anymore and uh, I try to sneak in sessions um, at the ACS meeting when I get a chance. Um, so in editorial operations, uh, this is a director level position so this oversees a very big part of a, a strategic component of um, our publications division. Um, I manage a staff of about 25 people. Um, three of those are direct reports and the rest of the other, the 20 other people, 21 other people report through um, th my managers. I manage a large budget with direct uh, authority over a budget. So in, in spending, figuring out that, okay, this contract is a million dollars, this one is a million five, you know, this one is $250,000. Um, and it is a lot of work, um, legal work, uh, and working with our in-house counsel and, and external counsel about, okay, are we getting what we're paying for in our contracts? How do we negotiate the best deal for ACS? Um, my job largely entails ensuring that we have the proper operational resources in place for our journal offices. So ACS Paragon Plus, our manuscript management system, um, is under my group's purview. Our help desk is uh, part of something that we do. We have a, a publications finance group so it's a pretty broad uh, spectrum of, of people from very um, tech savvy computer folks to very savvy finance people who all work with me. Um, I help ensure that our journal editorial offices have the personnel, um, the equipment and the tools that they need, computer hardware um, to people, to hiring new assistants, to promoting assistants, to um, working with university human resources um, to ensure that uh, our journal assistants are all functioning, um, all have the, the proper resources. Uh, as a director of a big functional unit, I interact, uh, I help lead um, strategic initiatives for the division. So things like um, how do we make our copyright status form go from being a PDF that people have to print out and sign and fax back to something that we have a click-through agreement for, and something that my group did. Um, we're looking at redesigning our author and reviewer experience. That's something that my group is leading. So these are, are things that require collaboration among lots of different moving pieces um, and lots of people. Um, my day-to-day -day interactions are clearly with my staff and then also with publishers and with our external vendors. <laughs> so what does my typical work week look like? I thought about putting a typical day up there, but I don't really have a typical day. Um, you know, I, I look at my travel schedule, I'm like, okay, I'm in California today, I'm in New York on Thursday, I'm in Philly next week, Monday, so I travel a lot. Um, I travel probably about 20% of the time. Um, you know, I, I review various things. Um, it might be staff reports on initiatives or reports on how our systems are performing. Um, I review and reply to emails uh, incessantly. Um, my BlackBerry is my best friend and my worst enemy. 
Um, I analyze financial reports. I analyze contracts. Um, I make sure that our resources are appropriately allocated. I take lots of meetings. Um, you know, there are days I look at my calendar and it's filled with, it's all purple is, is my color for meetings, and it's seven hours of purple. Um, and that's sometimes a little overwhelming, but uh, it's a lot of fun because I get to interact with really great, smart people. So I interact with my stakeholders, our stakeholders, our editors, their staff. Um, I meet with my staff, I meet with my boss. One of the things that's really important is learning to manage up. What is the information that my boss needs from me to be able to do her job? How do I make sure that my boss is never surprised by something that an editor might call her up and, and say? So it's really, it's, a, it's, it's clearly a two-way street between my boss and me. Um, I spend a good bit of time writing uh, reports, monthly reports, reports about ongoing initiatives, um, talks and remarks. Um, sometimes it's slides for my boss, sometimes it's slides for her boss, um, and, and emails. So it's, um, it's, it's a lot of different things that I do. Um, and Excel. I do a lot of work with spreadsheets. So, uh, so some good office skills are really important. So what do you need to do my job? Well, frankly, a PhD is necessary to get your foot in the door. Um, at this point, am I using my PhD in a scientific capacity? No, but what does a PhD teach you? It teaches you how to think. So I can now construct really good arguments about why we should do something or not and, and put together all of the points behind it. Um, you have to be fearless in meeting new people. Um, I'm not kidding when I say go up and ask someone for something that you want. Uh, you have to be able to write persuasively. You have to be an effective leader. Um, a group of 25 is a lot of people. I mean, and, and certainly uh, the faculty members in, in um, the room here can attest to that it's a lot of work to, to lead people. Um, the ability to multitask. Can I pick up the phone and have an IM conversation and email all at the same time? Yes. Do I recommend it? No, because someone ends up not being entirely listened to, right? Um, you have to be at ease with public speaking. Um, you have to be able to travel. Um, and I guess travel to some cool places. I mean, I get to, I get to go back and forth to Washington and, and Columbus, which is fine. But I get to come to places like California. Um, I get to I go to London. I've got contractors who work for me in Serbia. I've been to China. Um, I've been to Hungary and France, all for business. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> um, and then I think the other sort of required skill that someone needs is some business savvy. And this is something I think that really can be taught on the job. I'm certainly testament to that. Um, it's a lot easier to teach someone business than it is to teach them science. So at this point, um, I'm considering an executive MBA program. Um, I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to fit it in, but it sort of seems to me that this is something that I should do to continue to further my career. So. What does my job really do? Well, we help certify the results of your research. You know, the, uh, publishing is, is the end point of a particular project and hopefully, you know, leads to new questions either in your group or in someone else's group. Um, we help ensure the integrity of the scientific literature. We disseminate your work. Um, and the other nice thing that I think about publishing is that we can help guide where science goes. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to be involved in the launch of a bunch of new journals. Um, and you know there are new and emerging fields. And while I'm no longer doing bench research, um, I clearly get to help by giving you avenues to publish. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. So um, as Hassan mentioned, uh, acs.org slash careers is a really good resource. Um, if you're particularly interested in publishing uh, careers, the, fol the following three um, websites here are really good. They all have job boards. Um, PSP and SSP are big publishing organizations that a lot of different publishers um, belong to. And Council of Science Editors is a bit smaller and a bit more focused on um, sort of the editorial side of the house, on the managing editor kind of level of stuff. Um, and they tend to have a bit more focus in the biological sciences. Um, and then also use your network. Um, friend me on Facebook um, or LinkedIn and I will accept uh, any invitation and um, I'm happy to help you in whatever way that I can. So there's my contact information. Feel free to use it. Thanks.